Stadium in Cincinnati decked out in red today for good reason. Ron Dane's quest to become college football's all-time leading rusher carries Wisconsin against Conference USA member Cincinnati. The Bearcats on the prowl seeking an upset alongside Trevor Maddich. I'm Paul Kennedy. Welcome to Fox Sports Net. It's the first time this season the undefeated uh, Wisconsin Badgers have journeyed outside Camp Randall Stadium and the very first time in history, Trevor, that they've played here in Nippert Stadium. Hey, Paul, the Badgers have two opponents today. The Bearcats on the field and in their minds the specter of the Michigan Wolverines looming as next year's opponents. If the Badgers' hand is not in this game, Paul, Cincinnati has players that can burn them. Yeah, they went 11-1 and a year ago, won the Rose Bowl, their only loss to Michigan. It's natural uh, to look ahead. Today, the numbers we'll be looking at Ron Dane needs but 206 yards to become the Big Ten's all-time leading rusher and overtake the immortal Archie Griffin. And Archie Griffin, this record has stood for about a quarter century, Paul. When you look at the great rushers in the Big Ten, for a record to stand that long, it's amazing for Ron Dane to be on the cusp of breaking that possibly today. You're talking about a man that weighs uh, better than 260 pounds. How is he able to move so nimbly? You know, I don't know. If he were two inches shorter, he'd be square, Paul. The way to describe this guy is thick. So watch the Cincinnati players try to tackle him. It's like tacking, tackling a bowling ball as you look at his numbers there and the things that he is able to accomplish today in terms of breaking records. He needs but uh, 144 yards to reach 5,000. Only a handful of men have been able to do that. Uh, for Cincinnati to make a game of this, uh, obviously the Bearcats decided underdogs. They must hold on to the football. A year ago as a sophomore, their quarterback, Deontay Kenner became the first Bearcat in history to pass for more than 2,000 yards as an underclassman. He has a load of talent. He does have a load of talent and a load of pressure today because he has the chance not just to be the MVP of the offense, but Deontay Kenner has a chance to be the MVP of the defense today. If he can play ball control passing, ball control option football, he can keep Ron Dane on the sideline long enough for Cincinnati to possibly score enough points to pull this thing out. And if you're Rick Minner here in Cincinnati defensively, you must move men around. Do you blitz a lot? You know something? Look for them to start by twisting the defensive line to try to get into those running lanes and stymie the size advantage of Wisconsin. After that, what, you, what they will try to do if it doesn't work is slant the defensive line. If that doesn't work for Cincinnati, then they're going to go to the blitz. So we're going to see a progression to see what it takes to slow down that Ron Dane running machine. Now, how in the world, Lewis Johnson, do you try and tackle a man the size of Ron Dane? Paul, every week in college football, the second team acts as the scout team as they get ready to defend their opponent on the weekend. Well, this week, it's been a big job for defensive tackle Eric Lou Allen, who is normally at that defensive tackle position. But this week, he's played number 33, Ron Dane. Why? Because he's huge. 6'2", 287 pounds. And for the defensive backs of the Bearcats, it's been tackle drill practice all week. You know, I talked to Tinker Keck, who will be in that backfield for the Bearcats, and he said there's no way they can bring this guy down by hitting him up high. If you hit him in the mid-session, well, your chances get a little better. But the freight train Ron Dane has to be brought down by hitting him in his wheels. And then for these guys who may not be so big, imagine bringing him down and making sure that he doesn't fall on top of you. <laughs> Can you imagine, Trevor, they were using an underclassman, a red shirt this week, to try and uh, mimic the size of Ron Dane, an interior lineman. Barry Alvarez will be on crutches today. He uh, twisted his knee prior to the Ball State game, getting off the team bus a week ago, and he's obviously in pain. Uh, Rick Minter now in his sixth season here at Cincinnati, of uh, five seasons as you see. Uh, in the past, hoping to restore the roar for the Bearcats. They have struggled last year, dropped their first nine, finished at two and nine. A grand opportunity lies in store today if they can simply compete against Wisconsin. Wisconsin special teams are outstanding, as Jason Mamarelli and the Bearcats know so very well. Mamarelli, as you can see, uh, better than half of his kickoffs have uh, sailed into the end zone, and that is the best way to defend Nick Davis who ranks second in all of college football in returning kicks. He is in tandem with Michael Bennett as they split the hashes, and we are underway today from Cincinnati. And that is a Mamarelli monster. 
So here will come Wisconsin on first down. Scott Jason Cavanaugh, the fifth-year senior, will get the nod today out of Naperville, Illinois. He waited a long time to be the starting quarterback here and now has the opportunity. This is only his third career starting assignment. A conventional pocket passer with size standing better than uh, six feet, four inches tall. Here's uh, Scott Cavanaugh. And the uh, lone back behind him, Rondane, of course, on first down, and a uh, pair of tight ends for the Badgers. And the throw on first down, they come this way, and the catch is made at the 29-yard line. It's a mod merit who hauls it down in front of the corner. Jeff Burrows, uh, Kavanaugh connects with Merritt. The opening play of the game, Chris McIntosh, the largest up front at 310, the senior captain for the Badgers. And Nick Davis, the wide receiver as well as a kick returner, Ahmad Merritt with the first catch today. The defense in a moment. Shifting. Dane, the first carry. Leading his way out across the 30, up to the 38-yard uh, line, and uh, cutting through a hole as he started to his left, back to his right. You get the flow going against you. This defensive front today, Mario Mons, the largest up front, and at uh, 329, the only man in the front seven of comparable size uh, to Dane. Eddie Johnson, the leading tackler of this trio in the middle, the middle linebacker. And in the, the secondary, Jawan Gossett has gotten off to an outstanding year, a converted linebacker now, and playing free safety. He is a hitter. The tight end, Sigmund, shifts to the left side. A draw down. Game to midfield and across the midfield stripe to the 48-yard line. Dewan Gossett had to come up there, a gain of 13. But Paul, and you mentioned... Take a look at McIntosh right up here. He's going to be going up against a linebacker, number 48, Evans. And take a look at him, drive him onto his back. Now keep your eyes on the right side of the screen, right there on the right, here. Onto his back, and you wonder why number 33 can run that way. And two carries, 23 yards. First carry for Eddie Faulkner. Eddie Faulkner, 193-pound junior for the last couple of seasons, has been spelling Ron Day, a quality performer out of Muncie, Indiana. Tinker Keck on the stuff. And Faulkner's just the opposite of Ron Day. Ron Day's the big plow horse. Faulkner's a real shifty guy. And so it's a different look for the defense to have to adjust to. Fifth play of this opening possession as the Bearcats break the huddle and send both Nick Davis in the slot and Amon Merritt to the bottom of your screen. Chad Coons, the fullback. Kavanaugh trolls and it's caught. Tinker Keck with the right arm in to bat it away. Well, that was pure one-on-one -on -one coverage, Paul. They had nine guys stacked in the middle to stop the run. And Tinker Keck on Davis, number nine on number 22, is perfect one-on-one -on -one coverage. And so as the ball comes out, take a look at how close Tinker is right there to Davis. And Davis is one of the fastest guys on this football field today. See why Tinker Keck, an all-conference performer, was missed so sorely last year when these Bearcats struggled. An important snap here for Cincinnati. Canada in the flat now. And it's fourth down. As Bearcat coaches upstairs applauding the effort of their defense. And the putting unit is on for Wisconsin and for Cincinnati. Well, Paul, they, Paul, they take the first shot that Wisconsin has to give. This is the ninth-ranked team in the nation. And Cincinnati holds them three and out on the opening drive. Tinker Keck now standing at his 10-yard line to field the punt of Kevin Stemke. He has to be the best putter at all the Big Ten. Keck at the 12, 13. He never calls for a fair catch. Rarely has in his career. Makes the tough grab there and from the 15-yard line following the tackle by Michael Bennett. That was a 34-yard punt. 
The Bearcats will go on offense It'll for the first time. For the when he was a high school line. star, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, Deontay Kenner established nearly every passing record in the Bluegrass State. And now a starter for uh, just the second season. The Lions share the load for Cincinnati here collegiately. Robert Cooper, the lone setback, a three receiver formation. Tony Smichael on the move. Cooper. A solid gain of five right up the middle. Doug Rossfeld, the center, running behind him on that offensive front. The junior from Cincinnati and fabled Moeller High School in the suburbs here. The captain, Robert Cooper, on the carry. Jason Collins Baker just coming into his own. The leading receiver, the junior, from Detroit. Well spotted a gate of six. Out of the gun now. Forty yard line. In a sun field. He couldn't hold on. He was wide open. Defensively for Wisconsin up front. Wendell Bryant turns all of 19 years old this week. Had a huge game in the Rose Bowl win over Henry Pierce, an 18 year old freshman. Donnell Thompson, one of two Thompson brothers to start inside. The leading tackler in the middle. He's had a great career in red. And in the secondary, the school of hard knocks as applied by the free safety, Jason Doring. Third down, they need four. And through the hands of Jason Collins Baker a second time. Uh, Kenner laid it in there twice. They'll have to kick it away. That's all the coach can do is put the players in position to make the play. Collins Baker had two opportunities there to make Big plays to sustain this drive. He'll come back. He's one of the guys they'll be counting on, and that's why they went to him with those two situations early. But he has got Adam to get himself a medal now and not let this affect him. Adam Wolfeck will Nick kick Davis. to Nick Davis. Nick we told Davis. you earlier he was the second leading kickoff man in college football in all the nation. He leads the nation in punt returns. A high punt from his 27. Next passing down he goes. Superb special teams play by LaVar Glover. There is a flag down, however. A 53-yard punt the and the block in the back on the part of Wisconsin. The Bearcats playing well at the outset today. Cincinnati shows blitz. Dane right behind it moves the pile for five out to the 30 five-yard line. Well, Lewis said early, Paul, that they've got to tackle him low. He moves that pile because a bunch of defensive backs jumped on Isaac top of him. Thomas and if you do that, time. you're going to get an e-ticket right down the field. That defense, Tinker Keck led, has got to go low and get under him. I want you to look at his legs, Ron Dane. Look at his hips. Even hitting him in the hips and thighs is too high. He is thick. Barry was uh, down to one crutch a moment ago. He's one got the second one now. Obvious pain. On the draw. Running room for Eddie Faulkner, the change of pace, earns a first down. Mentioned it earlier, Trevor, the way they complement each other in their styles of running. Eddie Faulkner, the ball carrier, well, Faulkner tackle is made by a herky jerky Lover. guy. Now he's gonna come to the offensive right. Now, right here, he's gonna see this is stuffed up, and he's gonna come right out here. That's because that veteran offensive line is very patient and they stick on their blocks. That's just the gargantuan hole, but Faulkner will get through that gargantuan hole and into the defensive backfield faster than Dane will. And Barry on the headset to his offensive coordinator. Upstairs, Brian White calling the plays today. Chad Coons, the fullback, brought it in through the huddle. Cavanaugh throws on the run to Coons. And he has about three to Chad of the sophomore. Just his second reception of the still young season. Wisconsin has not thrown to its back very much. First couple of weeks, I don't think they want to show Michigan next week anything offensively. Well, especially his fullback. Barry Alvarez uses those fullbacks to block for those big tailbacks. And so, and he's had tremendous success doing it. As you look at the bowl games that he's taken this team to just over the last several years, keep in mind he showed up uh, in about 1990 to a Wisconsin organization that was just messed up. 
and has turned it around completely. And restored the tradition, you might say. Kavanaugh, kind of messed up. Turf Monster gets him at the 40-yard line. He'll stumble over the stripe. Got Kavanaugh, trips in the back. Got a stumbling Ball start in large measure for Wisconsin. And this helps Cincinnati. Paul, you mentioned it was that foot right there stepped on his foot. Casey Robach, the center. But what's going on here right now is that Cincinnati is hanging in. Lawson They're tied with Wisconsin. The play, There's only three minutes to go in the first quarter. And as long as Ron Dane rips off five yard, seven yard runs, Cincinnati is happy. They just don't want him to rip off 20 and 30 yarders so that Wisconsin has to be disciplined all the way down the field. Gives them a chance to make a mistake. Third long, they need 14. What's coming over the middle? What a tough catch. And Tinker catch crashing down by his shirt. Down at the 30-yard line. Well, that's that big play that Cincinnati did not want to have happen. Tinker Keck tries to turn it into a big play for them, though. I want you to watch as this ball comes out. Kavanaugh makes a great throw here. Watch Tinker Keck not try to make the tackle, but rather try to hold Davis up and strip the ball out. Now, number nine is Keck. And watch him hold him up by the jersey. He's not going to try to tackle him. Now, now watch this arm go through over here and try to strip. Watch this. He's holding him up. He's holding him up. And there's the strip right there. Now, he doesn't get the ball. But he'll do that all game long. After a game of 33, the Badgers hand the ball to 33. And he's down to the 27-yard line. Ron Dane with less than three minutes remaining in our opening quarter. And, Paul, that pass was good for Wisconsin. They've tried to throw the ball so far today. They have not been able to do it. And Barry Alvarez, with Michigan coming up, knows that he's got to get the passing game uncorked now because Michigan won't be quite so easy to run the ball against as Ball State. Waiting moments of this first quarter. Uh, Ron Dane close to 50 yards on the ground. And in there. And able to stretch it back to the original line of scrimmage. Mario Mons, the defensive tackle, junior college transfer from Fort Pierce, Florida. Well, we'll be watching that. Mons all game. He's the one guy on this defensive line that can stand up physically to this Wisconsin offensive line. Now take a look at him push. The center Robach back into the backfield and makes his own pile right there. That's a pure Mario Mon special. He drove the center back, he made a pile, and that's why Dane wasn't able to, to go through. Now he's going to take a well deserved rest, but this guy, number 90, is going to figure huge in Cincinnati's defense today. Third and nine, tenth play of this drive that they got at the 20. Kavanaugh throws it complete. Very fortunate it wasn't a gone 80 with it. He got all the way. He just got his legs tangled up with the receiver as he broke on that football. But this again, Paul, this is a win for Cincinnati. Now there's a minute and a half left to go. It's still scoreless. We'll see if they can make this field goal. But Cincinnati now knows that Wisconsin is not Superman. Cincinnati knows they can play with these guys and give them fits if they do what they've been coached to do. Russian-born Vitaly Posetsky from 45 out of the hold of Tim Roskin. And it is good. Plenty of lay. Wisconsin, ranked ninth in all the nation, puts the first three on the board today and leads in its first trip to Nippert State. Vitaly Posetsky, a 45-yard field goal, a set up by the running of Ron Dane in quest to win the Heisman. Vitaly Posetsky has kicked about a half of his efforts throughout his career at Camp Randall out of the end zone. This is in the direction of Jason Collins Baker, who again has trouble with the football. That is four times today Jason Collins Baker has been unable to catch the ball. Deontay Kennedy Jr. out of the gun. A three-man rush. And he throws and Baker. Tougher catch this time upfield at the 45-yard line. Could not hold on. Yeah, when he came to the there. When he came to the sideline after those previous drops, the series before. Uh, the coach must have seen in his eyes, focus like a laser, that he wanted that ball back. And that time, it was just a great defensive play by Eccles to make that drop. It wasn't a drop by Collins Baker. So he was coming off a career best day last week in a loss, 11 receptions. Not one today, and only one completion so far. For this man in center. Now two, and he finds a little slip screen, Jason Collins Baker. 
That's a tough catch to come across the middle, isn't it, like that for a slight guy like Collins Baker? Well, it's because of the guys that are in the middle waiting for him. You've got Danell Thompson, Chris Gadorzy. You've got guys that are absolute killers, and that's good courage by Collins Baker. And I'm glad they did that. That's nothing but a confidence builder for that young man because they will need him in this game. Still looking for the first first down of the afternoon from the Bearcats. On third down. They may have it for the first time. Tony Smichael. Yeah, up field for 35 consecutive completions here. Half a minute to go in the first quarter. You can follow Conference USA and its football playing institutions, www on the World Wide Web, c-usa.org throughout the year. Off the left side, Robert Cooper, the captain. That's a ramble of 11 and the first down. Couple of completions and the run of 11 by the captain and Cooper. Well, we talked about the patience of Dane. Take a look at the patience now of Cooper as he allows his offensive line to spread that defense out and then squirts through once that hole opens up. That'll be the final play of the first quarter, four receiver set. Cooper. The 210 pounds the running back, the most experienced player. And this is 36th start for Cincinnati. As Rick Mentor's team in great shape near midfield as we go to our second quarter and the Bearcats lead, but by a field goal. But a lovely day across Ohio today and the Midwest as Wisconsin from the Big Ten pays the first call in the storied history of its football program upon Nippert Stadium. They lead but by a field goal. Brzezinski from 45. But Kenner has the Bearcats moving and Cooper. And Cincinnati leads. And Paul, they hit that left side, third play in a row, that they go right over Kurt Doohan and Andy Weinheimer on the left side, and Barry Alvarez cannot figure out how on earth they had such a big play on the ground. Jonathan Ruffin, the freshman to add the extra point. What do you think the reaction will be uh, throughout the country when this score is announced? Robert Cooper and the Bearcats, 7-3. Cincinnati leads 7-3 on Robert Cooper's 51-yard touchdown jaunt. Doolin cuts Favre. Weinheimer comes down and blocks down on Malik, and Gadorzi blitzes over here. It creates a huge gap right there and on the left side of that offensive line Cincinnati has a physical advantage in size both of those guys Weinheimer and Doolin are over 300 pounds going against guys that weigh about 240 and we said at the beginning Paul that Cincinnati has guys that could run Cooper has the speed and the strength to burn Wisconsin if those guys let him get loose and that just was an example of what we were talking about Jason Mamarelli to kick to Nick Davis Along with the sophomore Michael Bennett. And this is toward Davis. And he'll down it nine yards into the end zone. A first down. In motion, Ahmad Merritt. Dane. Outside. Free. To midfield. The size of the big man. Not contained until drawn down from behind by Carlton Sykes. Tackle right made by Carlton Sykes. He gained 29. Well, this is patience again. Look at Adams there come up over here. American. He'll duck inside, and he'll be cut by Coons right there. And then the eyes of Dane is going to see that the contain man's inside, so he goes outside. That play was supposed to go underneath, but instead he breaks it out. Now, this is good speed for a guy this side. This guy goes, you know, nearly 250 pounds. To run that far down the field before he gets caught by a DB is pretty amazing. On Wisconsin, 
about halfway home to the 206 he used to overtake Archie Griffin and being spelled now by Falker. And he'll continue to climb the rungs of this ladder. Out of number nine and a Heisman Trophy winner in George Rogers, the Gamecock sits right in front of him. He's only got seven yards to go. Although Faulkner's in the game now, seven, his next carry, he might go up to number eight. Gamecocks uh, today at Georgia's alma mater facing uh, East Carolina. Lou Holtz debut in Columbia. Second down. Merritt on the move. Faulkner. And then cut left. And he darts about. Doesn't Faulkner. He does dart. Stop, start, stop, start. And he's taking advantage of the second team defensive line. The first team defensive line is now coming back on the field. But this is the second team one. They over pursue to the left side of your screen. And Faulkner sees that, darts right back to the right side of your screen. The whole second team defensive line just came out of the game. The whole first team defensive line is back in. They put him in there to begin with, Paul, to spell those starters, but it started to hurt him on this drive, so th those guys need to suck it up. A gain of 11 for Faulkner, still in there. Davis now in motion, it's up your picture. This is Faulkner, Trey. And roll down. Ron Dane being attended to right now. His left ankle as the training staff works on him. Well, you can look at all the padding and all the tape that's on there already. And this is reminiscent of what's happened to Ricky Williams with the Saints right now. You know, we've seen him hobble just a little bit as he's come off the field a time or two today, just like Ricky Williams in that Saints uniform has been. Same kind of, of uh, situation. Hopefully not as severe. 95 yards on the ground so far for Dane today. Faulkner stood up at the line of scrimmage by Dewan Gossett. Dewan Gossett may be a, a safety man by position, but he plays like a linebacker. And they're the concern for Ron Dane, and again, the Big Ten schedule begins next week. Well, Ron Dane and his offensive brain trust are not concerned about him winning the Heisman and breaking records so much as they are winning the Big Ten and going to the Rose Bowl. They think that the records will come in the course of doing that. But he needs to average about 156 yards a game for the rest of the season to break Ricky Williams' all-time record. And if he doesn't play the rest of this game, he's going to have an uphill climb. Third down now, meeting for it. Kavanaugh throws the first down by Ahmad Merritt into a sun field in front of Ivan Fields, a freshman corner. It's a first down, and the drive continues. This ball was in the air, Paul, before Merritt turned around. Take a look, when Kavanaugh throws this football, looking at Merritt the whole way, Merritt's not even Play turning around, and now he turns around and catches that ball. And, and that's what you get when you've got Wisconsin. an experienced quarterback. Kavanaugh was a guy that, that sat around for four years. Now he's finally starting, and he's been able to use that experience to do good things in this offense. Ron Dane returns now, behind the fullback, in Chad Kuhn. Dane, what the cutback, slipped the tackle at the line of scrimmage, is close to the end zone. Parallel to the ground, the final five yards of that run. Well, this is another parallel to Ricky Williams. Just like Ricky Williams last year, almost 50% of Ron Dane's yardage over his career come after first contact. And there you're looking at almost 10 yards that occurred after he was hit in the backfield. Ron Dane now over 100 here in the first half. And settling behind Coons. A two tight end set. No surprise here except he lost the ball going down and uh, is ruled down on contact. Stacked up at the two yard line. Cincinnati and everybody in the stadium knew he would handle it. The ball for a moment appeared to be on its way out before he hit the ground. Paul, look at Dane run here. He runs slow and is he, is he lifting? What do you think? Is he gimpy right there? That looks to me like uh, that ankle might have been bothering him more than he cares to admit to the, the training staff on the sideline as he comes off the field now to take a break. Off he comes, Faulkner back in. That ball appeared loose. But Wisconsin holds on, trailing here. Faulkner, wrapped up at the five, squirts to the three. And it is fourth down. 
But Paul, there's that first string defensive line that's been giving him grief. Mario Mons, who's now is limping off the field himself. This would be a devastating loss if he can't come back. But look at Mons come in here and get penetration right there. They think that Mons has a chance to play on Sundays, to be an NFL guy. He's just a junior, but if he continues his development, he is a guy that can be a Warren Sapp kind of player. Vitaly Pasetsky has already kicked a 45-yarder. A week ago, he missed a chip shot. It's pretty much it, about 21 yards. And no problem. Well, Wisconsin has its second score, but it still trails upset-minded Cincinnati late in our first half. Couple of concerns for Wisconsin. First, the scoreboard and uh, Lewis Johnson, Ron Dane. Well, Paul, all the guys are looking at him. The doctors, the trainers are trying to figure out what's happening with that left ankle. I had a report a moment ago that on the long 29-yard run, someone fell on his ankle after the run. Saw him go back on the field, come back to the sideline. They're still trying to figure out what's going on, Paul. That was Carlton Sykes with the uh, collar tackle there. I mean, we don't see later if Troy Evans, 48 atop your picture, stepped on it. It did not appear to be the case. But Dane did not look completely healthy on second and goal from the one no, last he, year. He was gimpy and couldn't push off on that ankle. But he tried to turn the corner. Jason Collins Baker, a yard deep. Swooped down at the 16-yard uh, line. Uh, the stop made by Roger Knight. Jason Cooper with a hole. Upfield close to the first down at the 39-yard line. Wayne Johnston, Josh Gardner on that right side, Doug Rossfeld the center. Well, they went right back to Gardner. He's going against Sprague, and he just takes him right out of his lane. Opens up a huge hole in there. Gain of 14 in Wisconsin enjoying a solid day on the ground. 96 of those yards belong to Robert Cooper. And a first down. This is Cooper's career best performance so Robert far. Cooper carries for and one of his teammates, Nate Heiss, shake it up earlier on that punt return. Lewis Johnson, what's the latest? Well, it's not good news for Nate Heiss. I talked to Bill Walker, who's the head trainer here at the University of Cincinnati, and he tells me that he has at least one sprained ligament in his knee, maybe two. They're going to make a further examination here at halftime. Right now, they're loading him up on the cart, going to take him out. Just talk to his parents, Jim and Kathy Heiss. Boy, are they scared, but the trainers came over and just gave him some assurance that he's going to be all right. Out to the game now. Across midfield, down to the 47-yard line. Another good Jocelyn Gardner on the right side. That's who has to open the holes. And look it's at the patience. You don't have to push guys around. First Take down. a look over here and look at the offensive linemen. Just stick on their blocks. You don't have to push people anywhere, but it makes this hole right in here just because they stayed on the guys. And that seam opens up when you sustain. For the end zone, going for Chapman. And a diving interception by Jamar Fletcher. What a play. The pass held up in the air. And Jamar Fletcher, a sensational pick with 17 seconds to go. That was a Randy Moss looking catch. Chapman. He goes up and stabs that it's ball out of the air the at full extension. Oh, you can hear that. You can hear that hit the ground. Got some unhappy coaches in the box. Look at the full extension right here. All the way up in the air. Well, that's just a beautiful athletic play. And the Cincinnati coaches are absolutely livid. They're in the next booth next to us here, and the walls are shaking. That is Look at that. Jimbo Fisher, their uh, offensive coordinator, long time at Auburn. He didn't want him to throw the, it there. Hell, the emotions of game day. <laughs> There's going to be some pressure on the quarterback at halftime from the coach, I think. Wisconsin content now just to get out of here at halftime and regroup. Nobody in America expected to see what you have witnessed today in the first two quarters here on Fox Sports Net. The ninth team in the country from the Big Ten. The Wisconsin Badgers on the short end of a surprising score. Robert Cooper's 51-yard touchdown jump and the extra point for Cincinnati, besting a couple of field goals by the Cincinnati Bearcats as we are at halftime. And, Paul, this is exactly the game plan that Rick Minter wanted to have happen. 
don't make mistakes other than that last interception, which didn't really hurt him uh, as much as it could have had it been a different game time situation. Get turnovers and mistakes from your opponent and keep it close. This is what Rick Minner wanted to have happen. The first half is all Cincinnati. Well, let's see what he has to say about this. He's with Lewis. Pizza delivery. All right, guys, thanks. Coach, could you have ever imagined, even though it's only by one point, that you'd be leading Wisconsin at the half? What have been the keys? Well, we haven't turned it over. Uh, we've run the ball, popped one. We said it was going to be tough sledding on the day, but hang in there and persevere. Maybe good things will happen. Sure enough, Coop popped one. The guys I'm proud of is our defense. They're the one that's kind of bent but didn't break and hung in there, played, made a great goal line stand. So, no, we expected to full well be in a ball game, and we're not upset that we're close, but uh, we've squandered more opportunities to score than what uh, we've got on the board. All right, Coach, great job. See you in the second half. Thanks. And now let's head to the West Coast in our Nissan Halftime Report with Kellen Winslow and Kevin Fraser. Kevin, we've got a great game going here. Fox Sports Net, college football Saturday. Time for our second half as the chimes resound from the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Welcome back. I'm Paul Kennedy along with Trevor Maddich. And if you're Barry Alvarez, a time for ninth-ranked Wisconsin to wake up. They better wake up because they've got a half to go, and they might not win this game. Cincinnati is, is hot. They're on fire, and Wisconsin is 30 minutes away from possibly losing their first game of the year. A look at the numbers here. Very stingy, except for the yards that they have surrendered uh, to Dade, and we'll get you an update on his condition shortly, uh, out with an ankle problem. But look at this time of possession. Nine minutes for Cincinnati. They've only had first downs in two of their drives, but they have not made the big mistake on offense or on defense. And so time of possession is overshadowed by the mistake-free play of Cincinnati compared to the goof-ups that have cost Wisconsin scoring opportunities after long drives. A pair of 33s on display here today. 103 yards. Ron needed 206 to catch Archie Griffin. Establish a new Big Ten all-time rushing record and Robert Cooper running for pride today. We're set for our second half kickoff. Vitaly Pusetsky booms this. Jason Collins Baker elects to bring it out. He's to the 20 yard line. And to the 24. He went down uh, rather quickly. A drill down by Joey Borsay, who's a real head on special teams. Let's check in once again. Here's Lewis Johnson. All right, Paul, thanks a lot. You know, I talked to Barry Alvarez before the game, and he said they have a team slogan, and that slogan is beat the game. Not beat an opponent, but beat the game. But so far in the first half, that's not what happened. He said he's looking for execution, fundamentals, no mental errors. But so far, he says they have shot themselves in the foot. They're not making plays, foolish penalties. As far as Ron Dane is concerned, the ankle is still not 100%. Ron Dane will check himself in and out of the game as the ankle feels, Paul. We'll follow that and, uh, on first down, a straight-ahead gift. Robert Cooper on the Robert carry. Cooper and into the arms of uh, Eric Mollick, number 98, at 261-pound nose tackle. Young Junior, Deontay Kenner, his number is today. He number one kick Eric late, Mollick. a great break on the ball by Jamar Fletcher in the end zone. And he's beat them with his feet. And the game of four, it'll be down his First, don't make a big mistake. Pick up a four by Cooper. Fletcher throws, pass is snared, and flags come out. Tony Schmeichel had his Jenner's hands on it. Bobby Myers five, went over Tony's his back. Michael. Myers has been Depending very active, uh, leads both teams in tackles in this football game. He has seven. Look at it. On the defense, automatic first down. Michael is very reminiscent of Ivan Green of Louisville, who's led the nation in tight end reception. Now, take a look at the bottom of your uh, right here, holding. And just before Michael came out of that break, Myers grabbed him. Pass interference, the third infraction uh, today. Against Wisconsin. Carry out to the 42-yard line. Cooper, the ball carrier. Tackle made by John Favreau. And there's Deontay Kenner for him. Well, seven for 14, but he doesn't have a completion longer than seven he yards. And play. that, It'll in some ways, is an acquiescence to the pass rush of Wisconsin. Just get the ball on short percentage passes, move the change, keep the clock rolling. Well, there is Van out wide in the slot. Collins Baker, top of your picture. Four-man rush and inside. 
Robert Cooper. And uh, quickly, it's third down now and long for Cincinnati. Well, this is a classic goof up, Paul. Robert I want you to take a look at two offensive guards who pull and go the wrong direction and run into each other uh -oh. right here. Not good. Yeah, no, this is, this is a goof up. We're actually the tackle coming in. Boom! <laughs> that is not what you want to have happen. That doesn't look good on the film. Uh, the eye in the sky again. Tomorrow, looking at this film. Deontay Kidder now needs to cross the Wisconsin 49 to maintain possession. Throws caught first down and stretching it to Tony Smichael. In front of Bobby Meyer. It's a first down for the junior and for the Bearcats. Well, Smichael using that big body. He doesn't have the speed to beat you with the speed. But like Ivan Green, he's got the ability to find the hole in the zone, and that's all he does. He settles inside the zone in the gap, and Kenner sees him right there and drills the ball. And so he's able to make that first down. Bearcats, a first down and the lead early in the third quarter. Play action to Cooper. Throwing back over the middle. Smichael burns him for 15 more. Kenner playing with much more confidence at quarterback than we saw at the outset this afternoon. And I like this play calling from Jimbo Fisher. Smichael has shown he's been able to shake loose, and so he keeps going back to him. Take a look as this boot, he fakes it, rolls right back around, and scans all the way across the field. And as he comes across, again, he sees number five between the zone. Kenner, out of Cooper. And he is sandwiched, hit pretty hard by Sam Miller. Uh, the uh, defensive end who wears number nine. And Barry, uh, Rick Menner was saying when you when you put a guy in number nine and he's a defensive lineman, that tells you one thing, he's fast. He wasn't recruited as a defensive lineman. Nope, and they just got bigger. He just kept getting bigger. He goes 6'5", 251. And he's the kind of guy you'd probably start out as a strong safety in high school, then move into linebacker. He just kept growing, so you keep moving him down closer to the line of scrimmage. Kenner has connected on seven of his last eight passes, the lone exception, the interception. Jason Collins making to the 22. Slipping inside and keeping the Badgers off balance. Wendell Bryant and Chris Godorsi, a linebacker on the tackle this time. And Paul, note that they're attacking the middle of the field with these high percentage passes. In talking to Rick Minter yesterday, he said that a coaching point for his team is to stay in bounds, shorten this game, use the clock like Army would with their option offense to keep it close when you're playing against a team that's bigger and stronger than you. The ninth play of this opening drive that began at the 24-yard line. Van in motion, Garden is the fullback. The lead blocker. Throw Jamar Fletcher. It's first and goal, Bearcats. Well, Cooper's got 40 pounds on Fletcher. I want you to look at the double fake here and the patience of the quarterback. Now, this guy is right here. He makes the decision, and then it goes. And that patience is what allowed the play to stretch. Now, right sure. there, you've got Cooper with a 40-pound advantage over Fletcher, and he runs right through him just like Ron Dane would do. The patience here of number seven, Kenner. Now watch him. He just waits, he waits, he waits, he waits, and now he does it. And that's the difference between Kenner last year and Kenner this year. Kenner last year was not as understanding of what they wanted him to do from an offensive standpoint. Now he knows not just what he's supposed to do, but why. Robert Cooper. The difference so far, first and goal, Cincinnati. Donnell Thompson, the middle linebacker, met him in the hole. Along with John Favre, it's second down. There is Donnell Thompson. Close to 300 tackles now in his outstanding Badger career the Madison, Wisconsin native. Well, everything's designed to funnel it into these linebackers. So Donnell Thompson, Chris Godorzy are the ones that should make most of the tackles. And Thompson benches over 400 pounds physically up to the task. Second and goal. Taking off. Touchdown, Kenner. Oh. 
10 plays right down the field, and Cincinnati's lead swells. Untouched was Deontay Kennedy. The extra point. Trailed by Jonathan Ruffin. Hello, America, and Deontay Kenner. Ten plays, 76 yards, and he waltzes in for six. The University of Cincinnati perhaps has never witnessed an upset of this magnitude. The young junior Deontay Kenner marching his team right down the field to build his 14-6 edge. Kenner reads a defensive mistake. Kalaji comes inside, and nobody replaces him outside. So Kenner, on the quarterback draw, sees that there's no contain. And so as he goes out there, this is goal line, folks, and look at this. No red jersey in the entire wide-angle shot. That is a busted contain. Somebody's in trouble. Jason Mamarelli with the ball cocked at the 35-yard line. That covered three quarters of the field. And he knocks this about five yards into the end zone. And Nick Davis will bring it out. Look at that speed. All the way up to the 30 and tripped up there to the 31-yard line. Special teams coverage by Anthony Thomas. So Barry Alvarez, the sunglasses on. His trademark advisor now in the sun field. And the, uh, the crutches to his offensive staff upstairs. And Deontay Kenner has been everything the Bearcats could have asked for today. Well, we said that he has the chance to be the MVP on offense and on defense. That drive was as good for their defense as it was for their offense because of the clock it ate up. The 15-yard line now, and if you're just joining us, his left ankle hurting, playing in pain and playing very focused football as the second half opens. Troy Evans, the outside linebacker, along with Dwayne Gossett. It took two Bearcats to bring him down. And off he goes. Hit gingerly on that foot, too. And now seven in the uh, history of college football. He's climbed up that ladder. He was 11th when the day began. 23 more yards to be sixth. Go to College Station, Texas, paying attention to that. Fox Sports Southwest, they may need every yard of his today to avoid a major embarrassment. Kavanaugh airs it out down the middle of the field, and it's batted away in triple coverage intended for Davis, incomplete. They are fortunate, are the Badgers. This was not intercepted. Ron Gossett along with Tinker Keck both there. Well, Davis is going to come along from over on this side, and he is going to be in the middle of three guys. Now, there is no way in the world that this ball should ever be completed, and it's not. And he takes a shot as he goes down. Third down now. And it's a fourth in the backfield. Motion merit. Earns the first down, falling forward. Faulkner's been solid today. He's uh, got a 40-yard gain going in relief of Dane. So the, the offensive line has been able to get pushed consistently with Dane and Faulkner running behind them. Well, they have, Paul. And one of the reasons is that Mario Mons, their big run-stuffing defensive tackle, is on the sideline right now on his back getting treatment done, it looks like to his knee, getting it rewrapped. And so his backup, Wartman, is in there trying to hold the fort. Emotionally, Evan protects the football. And it has about three, and away from the ball. Eddie Faulkner on Jason the Robach pushing the shot number still. 10, Bobby Eight Fuller yards downfield. Bill Ransom on the stop this time. This is his first start, number 99 for Cincinnati. Uh, young freshman from Indianapolis. What a way to break in. Well, there are several guys on the Cincinnati team that haven't played it down for him. I mean, Burrow, number eight, who's already got an interception in a couple of big plays. is another guy on this defense that until this year hasn't played for him. Straight up the middle. Busting through Chad Coates. The fullback across midfield. 
And the first down at the Bearcat 43-yard line. A gain of 22 on the first carry today for Coons. Well, watch this open up. They run the option, and they're just going to hand it to Coons as he comes right up the middle. They've only got two down linemen inside. Gary Everybody else is spread out. And so that leaves us a huge line. gap. And I don't know if Wisconsin just got lucky with that play call or knew that they were going to do that. But the spreading of the defensive line was to stop the outside play. When it comes up the middle, you've got the advantage. Only oh, the second carry this season for Chad Kuhn. But again, Wisconsin coming off its own goal line. This the third running back that we have seen today, Michael Bennett. On the carry now, sophomore from Milwaukee, inside the 40, Bobby Fuller Michael Bennett gave him a pretty good shot as he came across the 40-yard line. Well, watch Bobby out for Fuller. Michael Bennett. He is a flat-out sprinter. This guy has got speed that they say they like to use after game has dented the defense. Bennett is one of the fastest guys on this field today. High school sprinting champion. Look for him to make some electrifying runs as he goes through his career. All been on the ground so far. They continue to grind away at the Bearcats. Right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere for Bennett. Eddie Johnson, the middle Michael linebacker. Bennett over. on the carry. Well, here they're attacking the line of scrimmage. The tackle, Take a look at Eddie everybody Johnson. just coming in over here. We'll check it to the right side. Attacking, and not allowing one yard anything on the play. to happen, It'll be not allowing any play whatsoever to run. And the situation they're in now at third and three, actually closer to four. They'll hit it inside of the fullback. He's going nowhere. Eddie Johnson, the linebacker, met him in the hole. It's fourth down Chad the for Wisconsin, Tackle and they just might go for it in this situation. Look at the penetration of this Rick Smith defense. Look at him come in. There's nowhere for that back to cut. And 52 Johnson takes him and pushes him back. You think that won't be on the highlight film? And he's a happy guy. Came out of nowhere to be not just a starter this year, but also a team captain. And came out of nowhere right there to stuff Coons on that third down. They lost a yard. Fourth and four. Wisconsin goes for it. Play action, Kavanaugh. Under pressure. He throws. Open is Davis, who ran clear across the field and got free of Bobby Fuller. Came clear across the field to the near side. A clutch play. Kavanaugh to Davis. Mets him 18. Paul, the Cincinnati defensive coaches won this play, but the Wisconsin offensive players won this play. Number 97, Keating is in position right there. Just get your feet under you and make the play. But instead, he gets juked by Kavanaugh, and that's the difference. The first completed pass for Kavanaugh in the second half as he finds Davis, his third reception. Paul, oh, that was huge right there, huge. Dane pushing the pile. Dane for the end zone. Ron Dane. Ron Dane. Converting on fourth down for and Wisconsin. Dane touchdown. for 18 more and the touchdown. He's thick. He breaks a couple of arm tackles here. I think he's got a few of them still attached. Look at his leg drive, and look how thick he is from the waist down. And look what happens here. He makes the cut. There's an arm tackle. Forget about that. Now he's pushing the pile. Forget about that. And he's got enough burst to get around the corner. I don't think he cares if that ankle hurts right now. Nothing was going to deny him that end zone. That's leadership, isn't it? Out in the backfield, Wisconsin looking to tie us at 14 apiece. Merritt in motion. Kavanaugh throws back, a flag down, broken up by Tinker Keck. The flag thrown in the line of scrimmage. Holding on the offense, penalty declined, points no good. Another major infraction against Wisconsin at a critical time today. Well, what that was, Paul, was frustration. Robach was just trying to abuse the third string defensive tackle, Dante Elliott, and that's frustration on his part. No points for the takedown. A Bearcat defense, uh, if anything, they forced Wisconsin to drive the long way and consume 11 plays. And as you see, Ron Dane played a, a major role in this. He capped it, and he started the drive out of his own end zone. 
might be looking at the best coach in the history of Wisconsin football right there. Vitaly Pitsetsky, Gary Alvarez. Deep for the Bearcats, Jason Collins, Baker, and Won the Rose Bowl Glover. twice in this decade of the 90s. Hoping this year for an all-out Big Ten crowd. Jason Collins, Baker out of his own end zone. is back to down and level. What a crushing hit he took from Nick Bryson. And uh, Deontay Kenner lines up under center. Under orders to probably uh, kill as much crack as possible now. And hold on to the football. And he's going to throw it. And he throws it complete to Smichael, who had running yeah, room, and he slipped back, did pick up the first. Let's get out to Los Angeles. And here's Kevin. Ball is marked on the 28-yard line. It's a Bearcat first down. Paul Bryant used to say that. What was his favorite play in football, like Kevin and uh, Trevor? It's when one of my running backs hands the ball to an official. <laughs> favorite play, Coach Bryant. Cooper lowers his head and able to get outside the 30-yard line. Robert Cooper on the carry. Tackle by number 19, Roger Knight. In the top 20. Penn State, of course, in Miami today. Michigan, the, the next foe. And on the road, playing in the Carrier Dome tonight against the Big Orange. Wisconsin here, Ohio State stumbling about against Ohio and Purdue. Playing in a big way. P.J. May replacing Cooper. P.J. May out of the backfield. Works his way out to the 35-36 yard line. Kenner sticks it up incomplete intended for Ashley Hunt, the tight end, Donnell Thompson, the linebacker. Yeah, he didn't have a Kenner's shot at that pass. pass did for no, I think Hunt Kenner threw that away. Hunt was double Donnell covered. I think they were going to him the whole time because they haven't really included the tight end in the offense so far today. And since he was covered, rather than risk a pick or a fumble with a sack, he got rid of the ball, punted it away, give the defense a chance. It was first in completion after uh, four connections in a row. We saw Nick Davis bring one back 81 yards. It was erased by a personal foul call earlier in this game. What happens this time? Adam Wolfram looks to kick away from it. And uh, the ball will be down upfield at the 27-yard line. Now the third quarter is history. Kavanaugh and Wisconsin continue to trail at Nippert Stadium. Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday from the banks of the Ohio River in downtown Cincinnati. A lovely day throughout the Midwest. And Rick Menner goes to the fourth quarter leading heavily favored at nationally ranked Wisconsin. Although Lewis, as you can see, Ron Robert Cooper is struggling. Cincinnati trying to hit a home run here, an upset of monumental proportions on a day in which uh, Ron Dane is challenging Archie Griffin's Big Ten career Ron rushing Dane, record. Ron Dane out across the 20 the to the 22. Now with 158 yards. Pick he needs uh, less than 50 to uh, pass uh, number 45 in Buckeye history. And you see here in terms of uh, career marks. Second down. Dang. To the 40. Gossett hauls him down shy of midfield. 26 more for Rondé. Well, number 90 Mons is not on the field. He's going to start to his right, cut back to his left. And now look and look up Gossett. Now it's man for man. And look at this challenge right here. It's just me and you, buddy. And Gossett wins that day. Slams him to the ground. The next linebacker, number 22, Gossett. But look at that. He makes it personal, Dane does. He was staring down his tackler as they were running down the field. Play action. Kavanaugh rolls and throws incomplete behind Davis, who had gotten uh, between Gossett and Peck. And uh, Dane not on the field. 
It'll be second down and ten. Do you, do you see that in more than a century of Big Ten play, Red Grain, Elroy Crazy Legs Hurst, some of the immortal names, in, including bowl outings, of course, many in the Rose Bowl. This is an elite class of football players. And Ron Dane is about to go to the head of that list. Merritt's on the move. Second man through. Better running room for a uh, spinning Michael Bennett. Taken down by Gossett. Gossett covers, and Gossett comes up quickly to play in the interior. Michael Bennett, the That's the big part of the leadership of this team. They don't have much because everybody's so young. You've got Johnson that is. Last year wasn't really playing much for him. He took it on himself in the offseason to get himself ready to play and did so well. He's now a captain on this team. They just. The leadership of this defense and offense will be coming from people that nobody really knows who they're going to be. Ron Dane, the running back. Dane, with a flag thrown in, is close to the first down marker. Ron Dane, the ball carrier. And it looks to be holding against Tackle Wisconsin. The Badger offensive lineman. Yes, saying, what have we done? But Paul, why, why so much holding here? The defensive scheme is a part of it. When you've got defensive linemen that move and stunt and twist on the running game, offensive linemen, a lot of times when they're bigger and not as agile, holding. will Offense, reach out. 10-yard penalty, third down. And the contact comes on the side of a player rather than between the shoulders where it has to be? That's right, because an offensive lineman feels comfortable when he has made it up with the guy and driving it. And when he's running sideways, if you're not in contact with him as an offensive lineman, you feel like there's something wrong with you, and you want to reach out and make contact. Well, when you reach out, sometimes you grab. And so, really, it's the scheme that it's the in that is causing a lot of these holding penalties. The sixth major penalty. Six out of seven today. Have been of 10 yards or longer against Wisconsin. That really changes things now. Third and 13. The blitz comes. Kavanaugh against it. Throws, and it's broken up by Tinker Tech. Intended for Nick Davis. Fourth down, and the punting unit comes on for Wisconsin. Tinker Tech pretty quiet so far today, but what an awesome play. He read the route, and he read the ball. And when the receiver tried to continue on his crossing route, Tinker slowed down to make his play on the ball. Brilliant veteran move from the only fifth-year senior on that defense. The junior from Green Bay and Stimke. Not the worst of field position to attempt to fake. A high snap. He pulled it down, though, and gets a beautiful putt away. Tech from his nine rows is the ball. Wisconsin grabs it. Wisconsin scores. A touchdown! Well, it's a muff, not a fumble, because he never had possession. And Ryan Marks. It'll be brought back and marked at the 15-yard line. Bearcat player. A muff rather than a fumble. The rule on that is that on a kick like that, a punt, if the returner has possession, then fumbles it, the, the coverage team can advance it. But their Tinker never had possession of it. Therefore, it's a muff. Wisconsin can recover it, but they cannot advance it for a touchdown. It is still a huge play. But look at this. No possession. Boom. It just bounces off it. See, you mentioned earlier, Paul, that Tinker Keck doesn't like to call fair catch. And that time, he was taking a look down the field at his coverage before he brought that in. Now, take a look at the punter go up and catch this football. Well, Tinker made a mistake there, and he knows it. That is a, the one critical mistake that Cincinnati has made today, Paul. Look at what they've done all game. They have not made a critical mistake all game long until right now. And now that defense, if they were ever in a bind with their back against the wall, this is it with eight minutes to go. A great opportunity for Dane and Wisconsin here. The 15. Dane. Down to the 10 yard line. Second down. Now 17 yards shy of becoming the Big Ten's career rushing leader. 
Paul Dane in this offense. Now is the time for them to take control. In the fourth quarter is when a defense will wear down in front of a big, powerful running attack. And having stopped Wisconsin, forced them to punt, the defense is back on the field. Loaded up with tight ends on either side. Nothing fancy. Dane. turnover committed by Wisconsin today. And of all men, it is Dane that laid it on the ground. Well, Paul, when you get most of your yards after first contact, that means a lot of people are draped all over you, and you're still running. A lot of people come in, and he's fighting. And here comes Bobby Fuller. Fuller. And he's the hero there. But that happened because Dane was driving dragging defenders into the end zone with him and boom the last guy is able to strip that ball out the tinker keck was a part of that tackle fuller got a hand on it burrow recovered in the end zone it spotted at the 20-yard line and cincinnati now with 727 remaining in the game throws the ball and it's nearly picked off Jamar Fletcher in coverage. It would be difficult to defend the merits of that call. Well, Fletcher, that's what he does well. That's why he led the NCAA in interceptions last year. Yeah, you're throwing at him, an All-American. Why would you put him in that position? Well, they've had success throwing against him there all game because he has given enough cushion to allow that short pass and then give the receiver a chance to run. This time, however, he said, okay, no more cushion, and he's playing a tight press. Fletcher owns one interception today. Cooper, a career day for him. Tripped up in the backfield and now buried by Chris Godorsi. Robert Cooper. And it's quickly third down. Tackle by number 16. And it's John Favre that made that play happen with this penetration. John Favre, only 238 pounds as opposed to his running back on the other side of the ball that's about 250. Favre penetrated to blow up that play before that had a chance to get started. Boy, he's tired. This is a man that's carried the ball, carried the load, and carried half of the Cincinnati defense on his back today. And it's the and first still time they're behind. First time this season he has played two, Trevor, in the fourth quarter. They have needed him. On the drive, Cooper. Gets a block. Been able to work it out. About two yards shy of the first down. Now, do you make the ultimate gutsy call and go for it, needing about two yards, or do you punt it out of there? No. And Rick will pump. Look at the twist here. When you run that twist, those two guys are out of their rush lanes, and this is almost a first down because of that. And Paul, to answer your question, you punt this thing as far as you can go. Your defense has been able to keep Wisconsin's offense in front of them, and they have self-destructed rather than make long drives. Nick Davis, the game perhaps uh, literally and figuratively in his hand. Wolfen. The best in the country at returning kicks. Loses the ball! The bad catch is And then against the Sun, the leading punt returner in America does this. Well, he's looking right into the Sun. Look at the shadows, and the number four club just drills it. You can look at the shadows and look at the direction the shadows are. That means the Sun is right in his eyes as he's looking up at that ball. And what a momentum builder. That's the freshman, Derek Adams, 93, who's trying to hold the line in there with all the injuries on the D line. And when you hang in long enough, Good things can happen to you. That's been Minter's mantra today. Less than six minutes to go. Kidding. Keep it on the ground. Get the clock to run. Wisconsin has one timeout remaining. 
Second down here. Kenner wants to throw deep for Jason Collins Baker, and it's incomplete. Excellent coverage by Jamar Fletcher. You aren't going to get very far, I would believe, throwing against Jamar Fletcher. You're not going to get very far running the ball against that. Now, it's just tight coverage. As a matter of fact, that's not just tight coverage. You hear the expression, my leg is in your pants. Fletcher's leg was in Colin Baker's pants that time. It's and third and ten. This is uh, within the field goal range of the freshman Jonathan Ruffin. He's done the practice field. A four receiver set. Running away from the heat and throwing uh, incomplete, much too high for a well covered Jason Collins Baker. This time, draped by the other corner and Mike Eccles. And it's fourth down. And here will come Jonathan Ruffin on and the age of 18 from Metairie, Louisiana. A man who wears a ballet slipper on his right foot. Look at this. Will attempt, yes, to kick the ball through from 42. Ballet slipper and all. It's good. Just a freshman and the biggest field goal Cincinnati has had perhaps in 100 years. Barry Alvarez, reigning Rolls Bowl champion. Trail in the fourth quarter. Mamarelli's kickoff down in the end zone. Ron Dane, very patient to pick his way out to the 26 yard line. Well, five minutes, 440 now, is long enough for them to run the ball and run their offense down the field, especially since the defense is tired and Dane has been bringing out good big play. runs Second but this is four. it this is the drive for Wisconsin and that there was Ron Dane's Big Ten rushing record to build upon it Dane past Griffin and everyone who has ever played and carried the football Ron in the Big Dane Ten the out carry. to the 39 yard line. Paul, as you look at records and what it means for Ron Dane's Heisman, last year they had to give the Heisman to Ricky Williams because he set the all-time career rushing record. If Ron Dane does it again this year, it doesn't well, matter what anybody else does. I don't see any way to deny him the Heisman. Wisconsin. If he doesn't set the record, then all bets are off and anything could happen. And right now, Dane, really oblivious to the record, simply wants to win a football game that Wisconsin was heavily favored to dominate. They throw in the flat and the tight end. Makes the grab up to the 45-yard line and John Sigmund. Pass is complete the key John there, Paul, Sigmund. is that they got Sigmund down Tackle before he was able to get out of bounds. He did not get a first down, and so the clock still runs. The they It'll must get a touchdown, not a four. field goal, with three minutes, 30 seconds to go. And I have but one, one timeout, we'll remind you. And uh, Vitaly Pasetsky has the range. He has kicked one of 53 earlier. But uh, they need six. Faulkner, tough running, third down in four down territory. The game is on the line right now for the Badgers from Madison, Wisconsin. And Paul, what's going through your mind right now? Wisconsin knows they are better athletes than the guys across the field. Man for man, top to bottom of the roster. Barry Alvarez knows that. The Cincinnati Bearcats know that. And now, when there's only two minutes, 48 seconds to go in this game, what's going through this Bearcats mind is belief. Guys, we can do this. Wisconsin, those guys are starting to get their heart in their throat. Cones and Falk near behind Kavanaugh. On the draw, a first down. Eddie Faulkner across midfield to the 48-yard line, and Kirk Thompson, along with Gary Ruff, on the tackle. You would have to go all the way back to 1983, 16 years ago, to uh, find an upset close to this magnitude. Watson Brown was then the 
head coach of Cincinnati, now at UAB. And he took the Bearcats to the base of Mount Nittany and they beat Joe Paterno in Penn State in 1983. But it's been better than a decade and a half since anything close to this has unfolded. Dave. Hobbled. And he fights to the 45. The clock rolls less than two minutes. Right. The greatest Troy running back in the history of the Big Ten, statistically Ron speaking. Ron Dane. Now he wants that end zone. That's what's in his mind. And the clock runs. The clock runs. 138 to go. In the setback. The end around to Davis with running room. Davis to the 35-yard line and down to the 34. Antonio Davis on Nick Davis, the stop for Cincinnati. Well, they know that the Bearcat defense is geared in to stop Ron Dane, and so they want to get their other electrifying player, Davis. Now, this guy's the punt returner. In the open field, he is extremely hard to catch, and so this is a great call to get this guy the ball. And this is a great tackle. Look at number 42, Davis, to come on in there and 10 fuller. That goes in there and drags him down, still in bounds. The clock runs after the change move. Seeing the time remaining in our box box. In motion, Merrick. This is Faulkner. To the 26-yard line, he gained nine. Only one timeout remaining. Wisconsin will burn its final timeout here. Barry Alvarez trying to inspire Dane in the offense. Barry Alvarez and the Wisconsin Badgers on the throws of a major upset. They have done the little things right throughout the most part, but not today. Kavanaugh wants to throw down the middle. Straight for Davis. It's third down. And now Wisconsin, with 45 seconds remaining, must think first down and back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the passing game has betrayed the Badgers today, Paul. They have run the ball successfully, but they have not thrown the ball successfully. The bend-not-break defense of the Cincinnati Bearcats has not been forced to move their attention away from 33 Ron Dan. And now it's third down with 45 seconds to go. I don't know who I'd give it to. And he takes it. And Ron Dan fights inside the 20 to the 17. That's a first down. And Wisconsin must hustle back to the line of scrimmage and get set. As soon as the chains are set and the ball is down, the clock begins to roll. Wisconsin has used all of its timeouts, and Kavanaugh stops the clock. 37 seconds away. Kavanaugh and Wisconsin, the reigning Rolls Bowl champions, a prohibitive favorite here today against a Cincinnati team that lost to 1AA Troy State a week ago. But uh, on any given Saturday in the college game, this is where you play. Let's go, team! On the man coverage, Paul. Kavanaugh, the blitz. Able to elude it. Now scrambling to the far side. Sliding down at the 14. And the clock rolls. He must get back to the line of scrimmage and spike the ball. You see the time left. Well, that play cost him 21 seconds. 21 seconds on that play. And now Kavanaugh and Wisconsin, 16 seconds away from perhaps the biggest upset they have ever suffered. And Cincinnati's players and pouring this crowd, which is about half the size of a crowd that would gather in Camp Randall, but is making nearly as much noise, hoping the Bearcats can hold on. The ball, it's fourth down. This is the play for Wisconsin. Do or die right now. Davis and Evans this way, and of course, 33 in the backfield. Kavanaugh throws, and it is caught for a touchdown by Wisconsin, but there is a penalty marker now. So wait, Lee Evans 
made the catch. What is the flag? It's against the Badgers. Illegal motion on Wisconsin with 11 seconds to go. Well, Jimbo Fisher was playing in the booth. Let's take a look at what we've got here. It seemed like it was an illegal procedure, like an illegal shift. We didn't get to see it there. Let's see if we can see it. There it was. Right there. Five John right there. Sigmund. And that was a good call. And Wisconsin is going to go all the way back to Madison if they lose this game, saying that the refs, you know, got him on that play. But it was a good call by the ref. It was a clear jump by Sigmund. A second touchdown taken off the board by a penalty flag today. And Paul, this relatively little crowd compared to what Wisconsin usually plays before messed them up big time and cost them a touchdown. This is it with 11 seconds remaining. Time for only one more play. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Kavanaugh throws into the end zone. Incomplete. you must have now you'll have to face Ohio State next weekend well we're not necessarily ready to join the Big Ten as a member but uh, bring the Buckeyes on all right congratulations Rick Bitter right, thank you very much in one of the oldest stadiums in the history of college football Nippert Stadium today framing Cincinnati over top 10 member and Big Ten member Wisconsin on the day Ron Dane becomes the Big Ten's all-time leading rusher. Stay tuned. Coming up next on Fox Sports Net, Washington takes on Air Force. College Football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net. For Lewis Johnson, cover manager.